What is up, you guys? Today we're back at the Goodwill Vince, and by we, I mean both of us. I'm back, you guys, finally. It's been a while. It has been a while. Everybody's been constantly commenting about in the videos about when you're gonna be back, yeah, and so today I, is the day. I've been in Honduras for the last 10 days, and then unfortunately I got COVID, so I've been out for like two weeks. So I'm pumped to get back in here. Today's gonna be a budget building episode for our flip house. Uh, we have this much money to work with right now, uh, and we have some very expensive projects coming up at the house. So we're gonna try to find some stuff today to sell to add to that budget. About five months ago, we took $20 into our local Goodwill thrift store and we bought several items so we could sell online for a profit. Once we sold them and had our money, we invested some of it into doing some projects at a piece of real estate that we're trying to fix up into a rental property. And then we kept back some of the money to reinvest into more inventory. And we're gonna keep this cycle going until eventually we get to a point where we have a fully renovated rental property for only $20 out of pocket. At this particular Goodwill location, they have a pretty crazy deal where you can fill up an entire trash bag of plushes or stuffed animals and they only charge you one dollar so Haley and I found a ton of really nice characters today good morning WB8. this is a that's one of the um, nipplers or whatever it's called oh cute thank you Flipping Elsa on a doll. Tie, closey. I don't know who that is, but it's Disney. Oh, that's Secret Life of Pets. Yeah, I'll go grab that. Toy Story. Another Elsa. Coco Melon. Look at him. All the Zor. And you're just raking in the plush today. Grogu. Is this a chicken? It's a chicken. Okay, so I just found this book bag. It has Madison Home Builders on it. So that kind of hurts its value, but it's new with Tad. It's an OTO bag. It's really nice. Tad is on the back. I might grab that. My first non-plush, non-plush item today. But that's a for real friend. Right? Yeah. 2021. Just found another plush. A little Ewok, Star Wars. Oh, it's a builder bear. Huh. We got a KitchenAid. I think it's a coffee grinder, but it's literally brand new because like the straps haven't been taken off the cord yet. So I might grab that. Also got this old cheese cheese grater. Mouli grater made in France. It's kind of cool. You put your cheese in there and then like grab that. Here, I see a Pikachu. And it is just it is a very plush heavy day for sure. This is this a Mike, Mike Wazowski? Some of them are a little dirty, but we're just throwing them in the wash. They should come clean. Cool Grogu. It's cool. EDG, that's Urban Outfitters. It's cool. Got these vans back here. They're a little dirty, but it looks fairly superficial. Might just be able to spray them down with some stain remover and just throw them in the washing machine. Come out, these are a men's eight. Got these Red Wing made in USA. Boots, fire soles. Let's see if I can. Is this the other one? Yeah. Those are pretty cool. A big old panda back here. 
play play Tive TV. I get him. We got another Mike Wazowski down here. He's got the little MU hat on there. That's awesome. Got a build a bear mouse. I've never seen a mouse before. Some of the build a bears can be worth a good amount of money. Usually the ones that are weird, limited edition. I don't know if this one's good, but it's so cheap. Why not? A couple of hats over here. Ohio Pile, Pennsylvania. I don't know what that is, but we'll get it. Nice glimpse. This is vintage. Made in Taiwan. Definitely get that though. It's kind of cute. There's no brands, but maybe somebody will want that. Is that coastal? Those are pretty cool. Okay, I just saw this tag. Free people. What's it attached to? <laughs> okay, little turtleneck. Be the free. New tag. That's so cool. So an Unmadewell sweater. It's almost sweater season, right? And here's another free people piece. This is a size large. A little like crop sweater. Very cute. And three times the charm. Free people, size medium. It's a cute little like sparkly blouse. Getting the mother load of free people today. This is a, let's see, size extra large. Button up shirt. Very cute. Pretty saturated brand, the North Face. Still a solid pickup from the bins. Right. North face jacket right here. It's a women's extra small though. Let's make sure the zipper works. It's the high vent, North Face high vent, women's extra small. I think there's a, it's a Nike over here. Small, made in Cambodia. No issues though, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that. I'm gonna go combine the flush bags with Haley, check out, see what the damage is, and then head home and get this stuff cleaned up. Oh, we got some sun post to sun Yeah, it's a three bag day. I think Josh is ready to go. Three bag day. I'm Let's tired. go check I'm out. Hungry. I'm hungry too. Let's get a snack. Let's ask Chat GPT where we should eat for lunch today. No, I think we should just go to Chick fil A. Okay. All right. 5014. Not too bad. Lots of plush. We got a, I, just, I just found a Chick-fil-A coupon on the ground, the ground for a free cookie or a free brownie. Unless it's actually been added to an app because you have to add you know? it to the app now. I don't know. Only one way to find out. If you guys are enjoying today's video, I would love to encourage you to hit the like button down below as well as subscribe to the channel and turn on all notifications. We're going to do a huge giveaway when we hit 400,000 subscribers and I would love for you guys to be a part of that. So we spent a total $50 and 14 cents. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that or not. $50 and 14 cents. It was 26 pounds of normal items at $1.89 per pound and $1 for this entire bag of plush. That is that's crazy. Killer. So we got our Chick-fil-A and they scanned the coupon the, for the brownie and it worked. It took off 225 for the brownie. It's so we got brownie. Look at there. We literally found that brownie in the I Goodwill parking know, lot. Right? <laughs> Gonna stop at another Goodwill, but Haley has not seen the flip house since she left for Honduras. Yeah, so I'm she excited. has not seen any of the work that I've been doing over the last five or six or seven videos that we posted on the channel. So we're gonna head to the flip house after this Goodwill and get Haley's reaction on everything that I've done. These are kind of interesting looking Merrells, but there's a hole in the side right there. But if there wasn't a hole, I would definitely get those. Those are awesome. Got some little kid Jordan ones right here, but a lot of peeling there. What you got? Oh, the pineapple ones. Today. Yeah, those are awesome. Yeah. I mean, they're a little dirty, but. We'll get them. We sold the adult version of those for $129 like three weeks ago. Ariats. Ariat clocks. Hmm. Yeah, I'll grab those. Haley said, I found these really cool Merrells, but they have a hole in the top. And I was like, yeah. oh, the bright color ones. But these is this is another pair. There's another pair exactly oh, like really? those over there. It's got a hole in it. With the it. hole right there. Oh, really? Yeah, exactly the same. Oh, but look. Oh, maybe this mismatched. Maybe we can match them, match them up. 
For some reason, this part of the video triggered a copyright claim for some of the background music in the store, but we walked over here and found both pairs of shoes, and they were mismatched, but both pairs did have a hole in one of the shoes, so we couldn't get either one of them, unfortunately, but they were pretty cool looking. I might get this pair here. Adidas, they're just kind of classic. Minimal wear on the treads. They're men's size 13. Black and white, not too dirty. Just need a little wipe down. Men's size 13 is pretty good. We just sold two under uh, pairs of Under Armour shoes that were like men's 14, I think. Uh, and both of those, one buyer bought both of them for like 60 bucks. So I'm not going to get about 25 for these. Looking at the clubs over here, I don't see anything of value, but I found this two iron. Look how tiny that is. Oh my gosh. That'd be impossible to hit. So I'm over here in the women's section, actually, but I just found this men's North Face, like half zip pullover. It's a men's size medium. Kind of like a... I don't know what color that like a heathered speckle gray tan sort of it's got a little zip pocket on the sleeve no stains no holes that i can see this will be five dollars and 75 cents so definitely gonna grab that you found anything looks like it yeah. okay i found this it's just american eagle but it's a really cool like yeah fleece patterned i like that pullover. yeah it'll be 575 something like that then i found um tried and true patty not patty. small but <laughs> Oh, what's that? Oh, it's got a little hole in this. No. Oh, man. It's like a quilted oh, pedic. That's so cool. I know, it's so soft, too. Huh. And then, look at this thing. Look at this thing. She's excited. It's a Levi's oh, wow. jacket with spikes. That's really cool. Look at I've that. I've never thing. seen that. Oh, before. well, it's been cut off. It's definitely been altered. Do you think it's. It looks well done, though. Halloween's coming up. I don't know. What that do you could think? Be, that could be a Sid costume from Toy what Story. Do you think? I think you should get it. I think it's cool. What you got? Okay. That's for me. That's Personal cute. use, okay. Um, Lulu's new attack. Oh wow. Should I get this? It's like it's, I don't usually pick up Under Armour, but it's a nicer like yeah. snap tee jacket. Yeah. Anything on the back? Just a little like Under Armour logo. Yeah. And Be then five seventy five. I think also that's don't worth pick it. up Michael Kors, but this is like a nice puffer vest. Yeah, I like that. Sweet. Add it to the pile. You ready? Yes. Okay. Let's head to check out and then go to the flip house. Sorry, I hiccuped. Okay, Haley was digging in this little thing for something remote and she found Look, a club, found a club, a club penguin. penguin plush. Kevin, Common with Picker, sold one of those for like 40 bucks the other day. Seriously? Not that exact I one, but like... I used to be a huge fan of Club Penguin. Before yeah. like, creeps got on there and talked to little kids. <laughs> you were one of those jam. little kids. That's awesome. I don't know how much it's worth, but Kevin definitely sold one for 40 bucks. Every time I try to leave, you keep finding more good plush. We'll get the Club Penguin and the, and the Squish Squirrel. She's so excited. This is her first time in a thrift store in like two weeks. I can't get her out of here. So Haley decided to put the Ariat clogs back. Those are just kind of a tough sell these days, but we did get everything else. And we spent a total of 46 buckarooskies. Pulling up to the flip house. The only thing you can see from outside is the door that I painted. What do you think? Lots of trash outside. <laughs> it's just like the door. There's trash, the trash is fine. What do you think of the door? Oh, the door! Wait, yeah. I gotta get a better look. It's okay. too far away. It looks good. Yeah, I like it a lot. Everyone in the comments said that they like it as well, so that's what's important. Yeah, that looks really good. Okay, go on time. This does not look good. This does not, but just ignore all this. This is been this way for months. So. This is a construction zone. Yeah. Wow. It's the cabinets. It's together. Oh, look, our pantry. Yep. Wow. What happened back there? Oh, I didn't even see that. I guess they broke it when they delivered it. I didn't even open that one. Whoops. Look at Haley's been here for 30 seconds and she's already finding. Look at it though, that's Yeah, that's definitely, that's they like dropped it on the truck or something. Yeah. I mean, this stuff is not like super durable, but yeah, that's definitely. Wow, this looks really good. Oh, can you just imagine mm. our coffee bar right here? Oh, yeah. It's gonna look so this good. This is the easiest place to imagine what it's gonna look like. Like yeah. a countertop and the coffee bar, open shelving. Yeah. It's gonna look really good. It's gonna look really Wait, good. Dean came over and put that air vent in. Oh yeah. So there's cool. air coming out of there. That's the only air vent we have in the entire kitchen, which he said is surprising because hmm. he thinks there should be one over on that wall somewhere. Then we got these cabinets, a little tiny one here. And then this will be covered up with countertop. Right. And then this will go back further, but I've got to cut a hole in the bottom of it to put the water line. So I'll be pushed back and that's our sink. We might do another one on this side of the, of the well, are we going to have the bar come out? I don't know. That's what I want to talk to you about. Yeah. I don't know if we have a, like the L shape, like the old stuff on everything. Like the L shape that comes out a little bit, so you have somewhere to sit. Yeah. 
Probably. I think we were going to do that, like a two-seater, like a little two-seater, maybe yeah. right here, and it would come out to maybe like here or yeah. so. So basically, we can get another one of those curly ones, the little Lazy Susan one, but that one right here, and then maybe they have like a, one of these. These are two. This is two 30-inch cabinets, but they have one 60-inch cabinet that just has a middle drawer and like basically looks exactly like this, but it's one single unit, and that one's like cheaper. I should have got that one here. Hmm. We can honestly get the 60 inch unit one and put that one here and then move these two over here to create the island. Yeah, and then we'll still have to do, we'll have to do the upper cabinets because I think we will need some extra like um, space yeah. for appliances and stuff. Yeah. So over to like here and then the cute little floating shelves here to kind of open up this space because it was so closed before. Yeah, it was very closed. So we'll yeah. definitely have to get upper cabinets at least over there in that corner. Yeah. What do you think? This is like a really good Josh. Thanks. Uh, this bathroom right here, I painted it white. This one? Yeah, and I cut a hole in the sh in the shower. Okay, okay. Oh, wow. Do you like it? Is that a good wow? That's so, oh, this looks good. You said you wanted to like the light oak flooring. Yeah, I like and then it. Uh, this was the one from the warehouse that we took out. Yeah. And it matches, because it's like dark wood, but this flooring has some dark spots in it. So it matches. That looks good, yeah. I also got this mirror over here um, at Home Goods the other day, but I think it's slightly too big. So I'm gonna put it up here. It gets in the way of the outlet. But you can like, put it higher, right? Yeah, yes. But then it would still be in the way of the outlet. Oh, I see. So I don't know. I think we need something smaller. Hmm. And it has a crack in it, which is why I got it for $15. But people in the comments got mad at me. It looks so crazy, like, looking in here and, like, I can't believe we're going to have a toilet here and the shower. Yeah, it's going to get kind of... It's going to be tight. It's going to be tight. I did look at the old videos, though. The old toilet that was in here was very small. Because that's where the toilet was. Like, yeah. I didn't move the toilet and I didn't move the shower. Yeah. So everything definitely fit in here. So I think I'm gonna have to put And the, the curb was huge on the shower. The curb too. was huge, yeah. So I think I have to put the toilet in first, mm -hmm. get like an undersized toilet with a smaller tank so it'll fit in here, and then figure out where to put the shower curb from there. Yeah. Because we don't need a ton of space in the shower. It's just a one person no. shower. So you like everything? Yes, I'm very impressed. It looks really good. It took so long. So it's currently Tuesday night. We got all the stuff home from the bins yesterday and cleaned everything. There were a couple of plushes that had some stains that didn't come out in the wash, so we just decided not to sell those. Uh, but we have like 59 things listed in our show. I did spend some money on some giveaways. So I went to uh, Walmart today and I got two, or I got these three Pokemon balls. I think these were like $7 a piece or something. We're just going to give those away in a lot. We're going to give away these two Lego sets. We got a Star Wars X-Swing thing and a Up from the Disney Pixar movie. So all this together was like, I think it was like $120 for, for everything after tax. So we're going to take that out of the budget because I bought these giveaways to make the show more marketable to get more people in. So that's a, an expense that's gonna have to come out of the house budget. But I think overall it will have a net positive from you know the money that we make from selling all this stuff. But I'll let you know as soon as it's over. So the Whatnot Show went over very well. People were really uh, digging the Legos that we gave away. We did one giveaway in the middle of the show after we sold 20 or 25 things. And then we did the other one at the very end of the show. And that really kept people engaged and excited and gave them something to look forward to so that went over very well the free people items that Haley found at the bins did very well too we had $17 sale there $36 for that one uh, this one down here sold for 35 so those were uh, surprising because typically free people goes for like 10 to $15 for us so all of uh, Haley's finds at the bins today did really well obviously the plush did really well for us um, it's kind of hard not to make money on plush when you can get so many of them just for a dollar. We had some that sold for as little as, you know, three, four, five dollars, and then some sold for over thirty dollars. I think the Coco Melon went for thirty-five dollars. We had this Minnie Mouse one that went for thirty. Uh, so very nice on the plush. Really appreciate all you guys that show up to our shows and are interested in buying that stuff. The Nike Kyries that Haley found at the regular Goodwill sold for $23, pretty good deal there. The Michael Kors Puffer Vest sold for $13, probably could have got a little bit more money for that if it wasn't an extra small. Extra small is just a tough sell, especially on a live sale like like whatnot. The Clemson Corduroy Snapback hat that I got at the bins, that one did really well though, 25 bucks on that one. My man Bulbasaur sold for $16, but you guys get it. I mean, some stuff sold for 
a few bucks. Some stuff sold really well. I mean, obviously, we're very blessed to have people that actually want to come to our whatnot shows and support us, uh, and we never want to take that for granted. We sold a total of 58 items uh, and a total sales amount of $946, and after whatnot fees, we're left with $817.17. We did go ahead and list the Osprey backpack and the Red Wing boots on our eBay store because those random high-value items like that don't really sell great on whatnot. And I know there's probably somebody angrily typing on their keyboard right now saying, Josh, I thought you said you were giving up on whatnot, never selling there again, and that's not what I said at all. Last week, we made a video called Giving Up on Whatnot, so I understand the confusion, but it was just me taking one day to just source some cool stuff to sell on eBay, get it actually listed, and just spend, I think I spent like three or four days really focusing on eBay. We didn't do any Whatnot shows in that period, and because of all that work we did on our eBay store, we have significantly improved it. $7,346 in sales in the last 31 days. That's up 140% from the prior month, we sold 162 items in the last 31 days. That's a little bit more than five per day. Average selling price, $45.35 per item. So in those four days, I did a ton of work to eBay. I implemented various growth tactics and strategies to sell older items, to list newer items, and it worked. And I've done that. And now we're, we're going back to whatnot because honestly, if whatnot works for you, it would be kind of silly to not utilize that because it's such a great platform if it works for you. And I'm not telling you to go sell on whatnot if you don't want to do that. I understand completely that we have the advantage of having two or three or 400 people come to our shows. And I know it's tough to get people to come to your shows. So I'm not saying you should or shouldn't sell and whatnot. I'm saying that for us, it really works. It's a great selling platform. We've made hundreds of thousands of dollars on it in the last two years, and we're not gonna quit selling there anytime soon. I do wanna keep making eBay content. We're gonna keep selling on eBay, keep implementing those, those tactics that I was just talking about, because obviously it works. I mean, I've proven in four days, working on our ebay store i've increased our sales 140 percent so obviously something we're doing is is working and honestly we get viewer sales on our ebay store anyway so even if we didn't sell and whatnot and only sold on ebay we would still get the same viewers that liked our videos and wanted to support us they would just go to ebay to buy the stuff instead of going to whatnot so it doesn't really make a huge difference either way but to be completely honest with you guys i have struggled with this a little bit because i'm a natural people pleaser uh, and it's very difficult to be both a YouTube content creator and a people pleaser because you can't please everyone. Like I read all the comments and literally like 98% of you guys leave positive comments that are encouraging and you just, you wanna see us succeed. You don't care where we sell this stuff, but there is that small percentage of people that get mad when we do whatnot auctions and think it's taking advantage of viewers and all this stuff. And part of me, the people pleaser wants to like explain everything. Like, hey, we give stuff away for free. We take care of our people. If they buy a bunch of stuff, we give them free stuff. And part of me is like, why do I feel the need to explain myself? Like, why can't we just run our business however it works for us and not care what people think? And it's just like a constant battle in my brain. And I don't know how to get along, along, get over that. I don't know how to get over that. It's, it's honestly been a struggle, but I am coming to the conclusion that I need to stop caring so much about what strangers on the internet think about us, especially because it's such a small percentage of those strangers. Most of these strangers on the internet, you guys are again, super nice and supportive and encouraging. And it's just like a, such a small percentage. I don't know why it lets me I let myself get bothered by it so much. Most YouTubers I know that are similar sizes to us, like in terms of views and subscribers, they just don't read the comments at all anymore. They're just making their own videos and they don't care about the opinions. And I don't think I'm quite there yet because I really enjoy engaging with you guys. We're very responsive to our comments. I'll give you a heart. I'll respond to questions, at least in the first couple of days of the video before we move on to the next one. But I did go ahead and delete the YouTube studio app off my phone. It's like an app that tells you how your video is performing and shows you your views and comments in real time and stuff. And I, I really let that app kind of take over a little bit too much lately. So I think deleting it and just like maybe spending 30 minutes per day responding to all the comments from the day before is a much healthier method of engaging with you guys than constantly doing it on my phone 24 seven. I think that'll really help with the mental anguish caused by that small percentage of negative comments. Haley's over there. She doesn't even read the comments at all. So if you ever get a reply or a heart, it's, def well, okay. it's definitely me. She just can't handle any possibility of negativity. So she's like, I just won't That's read true. any of them. And like you were saying, I heard you saying something about you are a natural people pleaser. People pleaser. I am a natural people pleaser and I yeah. take things really personally. So it's very for difficult. my mental health, I just can't. Sometimes yeah. I do though. 
I, th but that's, you're so much wiser than me. Cause no. you're, you're like, I'm not going to be able to handle this. So I'm just not going to put myself in that situation. And I'm like, I'm not going to be able to handle it either, but I'm just going to try it and <laughs> see what happens. Even though I know what's going to happen. It's going to, it's going to affect me. I was talking to um, my friend, Carrie, American arbitrage the other day. He posts videos on TikTok and comments about resellers on TikTok are super negative. Like, I mean, it, they just rip you to absolute shreds on there. Uh, and he says it like doesn't affect him, but like behind the scenes, I think it does a little, a little bit. Um, again, even though it's just strangers on the internet that know nothing about you, just like having people be so mean to you sometimes, uh, it, it can take a toll. So that's why we don't post TikTok videos. I post YouTube shorts sometimes, but they don't really get any, any type of views. But anyway, I'm rambling. Just know that we're not leaving whatnot. We're going to sell them whatnot. We've got uh, a show coming up soon with all these here. That's going to be a good video. Tune in for that. Uh, we're also not leaving eBay. We're going to sell on both platforms for as long as we possibly can, because there are items that just work really good on eBay and there are items that work really good on whatnot. Again, not trying to convince you to sell on either platform. I'm just telling you we're in a new mental space in business and we're going to keep doing what works best for us without worrying about what other people's opinion of it is. I do enjoy people's opinions if it's like honest, constructive criticism though. So over the last couple months, we've gotten multiple requests for us to bring back the outro song at the end of our videos. We had stopped it maybe five months ago and I was like, ah, people just aren't interested in that. But turns out it is. And I brought it back in the last video and we had probably 10 or 15 comments like supporting it. Like, oh, I'm so happy the song's back. So we're bringing back the song again. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Hit the like button, hit that subscribe button. Love you so much and we will catch you on the next one.